Hello and welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us today for this online and informal reading of Be Love Can Be Hard, a new children's book by former NFLer and Minnesota Supreme Court Justice, Alan Page and his daughter, Kami Page. My name is Rob Davis. I work at Fresh Energy, a nonprofit organization working to speed the national transition to clean energy and give all kinds of people working in food and farming, conservation and ecology, more and more reasons to love solar energy. We call these extra reasons co-benefits. Solar farms, after all, aren't just about love for clean energy. There's also a lot to love with what's growing under and around the panels. And that's part of why we're hosting this event. Before we get to the book reading though, and discussion, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Janice Watts, Senior Associate on Fresh Energy's Energy and Access and Equity team, and Melanie Santiago Mosier, Managing Director of Equity Programs for Vote Solar. Over to you, Janice and Melanie. Thanks, Rob. Hi, everybody. My name is Janice Watts. I'm so excited to be here today because, like you said, Rob, there are major co benefits of solar. And part of my job on the Energy Access and Equity team at Fresh Energy is to guarantee that everyone benefits from solar energy because solar energy is powered by the sun, which is so cool. And every, that everyone includes honeybees, pollinators, livestock that live on the farms, but most importantly, people, especially communities that are black and indigenous and of people of color who have been for too long excluded from the many forms of clean energy because of the barriers of things like institutional racism and economic oppression. So ensuring an equitable and just energy transition is a key pillar of Fresh Energy's work. And this means that clean energy projects like solar must benefit all of us. So thank you. And uh, I'll hand it over to Melanie to tell us about your work. I couldn't have said it better, Janice. Thank you for that. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Melanie Santiago Mosier. My pronouns are she, her. And yeah, I'm the managing director for the Access and Equity Program at Vote Solar. Uh, we work state by state at Vote Solar to repower our communities with sunshine and to build a thriving clean economy with affordable solar energy for all. Advancing equity, inclusion, diversity, and justice within and beyond Vote Solar is critical to our success. So we're taking deliberate, sustained, and conscientious attention to being equitable partners with environmental justice groups, communities of color, and other community organizations in the places where we work. So working with these partners, we formulate policy solutions that will break down over a century of energy inequities and lead to a more equitable solar and clean energy, energy future. So we advocate for solar and clean energy policies, programs, and incentives that are designed to provide bill savings, wealth generation, jobs, and improvement to local air quality and public health. So recently on LinkedIn, I saw a quote by one of my personal heroes, Nathaniel Smith. He's the CEO of the Partnership for Southern Equity. And he said, equity is a way, not a what. And that was so important for me to see. For me and my team, equity is a how, a way. So to really make strides when it comes to this work, the best sources of insights come from those communities of color, the low wealth communities and other communities who have been marginalized since the founding of this country. We've seen incredible success in climate and clean energy campaigns when there's a strong coalition that centers the leadership of frontline communities. And we also know that solar is in danger of losing when we don't include these voices. So that's why last year at Vote Solar, we developed our just partnership principles and we're working really, really hard to live into them. And then that brings me to pollinators. That's one aspect of the pollinators work that really speaks to me and is exciting. This work of pollinators and solar and clean energy is centered on partnership. It's bringing together solar and clean energy, the agricultural community, the conservation community, and many other voices. And tonight, it's really exciting to be here where we're seeing that community and that partnership expanding even further to include art, to include authors, to include schools and kids. So I'm just tremendously excited to see the growth and explosion of this movement and so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing about your incredibly important work, Melanie. Thank you. So it's February, so we are celebrating Black History Month and Valentine's Day. So I can't think of a better time to debut the public reading of Justice Allen Page's new book, Be Love, Can Be Hard. 
I should mention that before making history by becoming the first African-American judge to serve on the Minnesota Supreme Court, Justice Page was an NFL defensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings for 11 years. And he also played for the Chicago Bears for four years. And now, in addition to being the co-founder of the Page Education Foundation and working to pass a constitutional amendment to give every child in Minnesota an equal right to a quality education, he writes children's books. Well, that's what I call a well-rounded career. Now, it's my honor to turn the mic over to Justice Page and Stoddard Candy Page, who is a second grade teacher. Thank you for being a teacher to talk about what inspires their work and to share a reading of their most recent book, Be Love Can Be Hard, illustrated by David Geister. Justice Fade and Kemi Page, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I've had the good fortune to write children's books with my daughter, Kami, my co-author and, and the one who brings these books to life between the two of us. It's been a, a an interesting, challenging, and very much fun um, opportunity for us to work together and to, to, I think, produce some pretty good books. We had the good fortune, you know, to be asked about eight years ago to write our first book as a benefit for the Page Education Foundation. And the first book was Alan and His Perfectly Pointy, Impossibly Perpendicular Pinky. And in case you want to see Alan's Perfectly yeah, Pointy, <laughs> Impossibly Perpendicular Pinky, this is what it looks like. Um, but we've been collaborating uh, on books ever since. This is our book number four. And uh, it was just recently announced as a finalist for our Minnesota Book Award. Interestingly, one of the other finalists is uh, one of the Page Education Foundation's former scholars. And as, as Cammie would say, it's really fun to be a part of all of this sort of coming full circle. That is so awesome. Congratulations to you both on your nomination. Well-deserved. Thank you. Well, with that, I will um, share our book, Be Love Can Be Hard. Thump, thump, thump. The soccer ball bounced back to Otis's feet in a perfect rhythm. Thump, thump, thump. Otis was so focused on the beat of the ball, he didn't notice the soft, velvety hum of danger floating in the air. He was just about to head inside for some water when he heard it. Bzzz. Otis panicked. Arms flailing, he raced to the back door. Help, Grandpa, be attack, open the door. Otis wasn't scared of many things, but at the top of his list, bees. Be attack, Grandpa, open the door. Otis, what on earth? Grandpa, bees, they're gonna get me. Otis's grandpa held him in a hug. No, Otis, they're not gonna get you. But Grandpa, Otis insisted, they're out there. You're okay, kiddo, Grandpa said. Try and take some deep breaths. But Otis couldn't breathe. He closed his eyes tight and pinched his body shut. Otis, bees are out there and being stung by a bee is no laughing matter, but bees are probably more frightened of you than you are of them. Otis looked up. He had heard all of this before. Disbelief wrinkled his eyebrows. It's true, Grandpa said. A bee stings to protect its hive. Once it stings, it dies. So it has no interest in... Grandpa, Otis interrupted, how do you know so much about bees? Well, when I was your age, I had a healthy fear of bees, Grandpa explained. You did? I did. And I wasn't alone. My friend Jerry and I were so afraid, we started a club to get rid of all the bees in our neighborhood. You mean your friend Farmer Jerry? Yeah, Farmer Jerry. Back then, we didn't understand bees. They just seemed scary. Fortunately, we weren't successful. As it turns out, 
Bees are amazing insects. They're pollinating powerhouses. So much of what we eat is a direct result of their hard work. Otis's face scrunched. In fact, Jerry doesn't run just any farm. He runs a bee farm. That did it. A bee farm? Otis knew his fun-loving grandpa was pulling his leg. It's true. The farm even has a learning lab. Sometimes learning about what you're afraid of is the best way to face it. That way, it's not so mysterious and scary. I think it's time we paid Farmer Jerry a visit. Otis wasn't so sure. That night, a swarm of bees attacked his dreams. Supersized stingers surrounded his bed. They were about to get him when, buzz, buzz. Heart racing, Otis's eyes popped open. Nope, he said to himself, I am not going to any bee farm and I am not going to have anything else to do with bees. Well, a frown followed Otis all the way to the farm. But when he got out of the car, Farmer Jerry greeted him with a wide grin. Welcome to Lilyhaven Bee Farm. Even though J Otis could feel Jerry's warmth, a cold chill crept up his legs as he tried to muster the courage to move his feet forward. Where are the cows and pigs, Otis mumbled. Isn't this a farm? Oh, sure, it's a farm, all right. It's a farm for flowers and bees. We've got a few chickens and goats roaming around here somewhere, but we mostly focus on pollinators like honeybees. Without pollination from wind and insects, there would be no seeds, no fruits, no vegetables. Can you imagine? I believe it's our job to help protect all bees and keep them safe. Otis found it hard to concentrate. Protect them? What about protecting me? Bees seemed to be everywhere, taunting him, buzzing out a warning, telling him to stay away. He scooched closer to Grandpa. Visitors are often worried about being here, Jerry went on. That's normal. No one wants to get stung. Be love can be hard. I remember when your grandpa and I wouldn't dare go in the backyard, let alone to a bee farm. Let's get your beekeeping gear on. It'll help you feel more protected. Otis gave Jerry a doubtful sideways glance. Noticing Otis's hesitation, Jerry bent down to look Otis in the eyes. Just remember, stay calm and breathe. Try taking a few slow, mindful breaths and repeat the words, the bees do not want to sting me. Heading to the meadow, Otis paid close attention to the bees and his breathing. The bees do not want to sting me. The bees do not want to sting me. The bees do not want to sting me. As the bees floated on the gentle breeze, dipping in and out of the flowers, Otis noticed his body relaxing. Unexpectedly, he also realized that the bees weren't taunting him. They were simply beautiful. If you look closely, you can see balls of pollen gathering on their hind legs, Jerry said. Otis was curious, but he still didn't want to get too close. He took a deep breath in, breath in and let a deep breath out and then bent down. Wow, he marveled. The wooden hives were electric with activity. The bees were busy and Jerry was busy too. While he prepared to open a hive by using a bee smoker to calm the bees, he explained that all 50,000 bees in the hive had different jobs, protecting the hive, cleaning, gathering pollen, feeding nectar to the young, making honey. Otis liked the sound of honey, but the number 50,000 made him want to faint. 50,000 bees in each hive? Jerry pulled out a frame covered with bees. It was filled with honeycomb and dripping with honey. If you're lucky, you may catch a glimpse of the queen. A sharp eye can spot her larger body, but there's only one in there. So deep breath in, deep breath out. The bees do not want to sting me. As if in a trance, Otis watched the busy bees buzz and dance and work. Jerry asked if Otis wanted to hold the frame. Otis was calm like the bees, but his hands shook slightly as he surprised himself and nodded. The bees ignored him as he took hold. He almost didn't hear Jerry whisper, there she is, the queen. Otis couldn't believe it. With each breath in, his fear breathed out. Amazing, he whispered back. Back at the learning lab, Jerry took time to answer Otis's many questions about bees. It's true, 99% of all honeybees you see are female and about beekeeping. Well, if you respect the bees, they will respect you. 
and about honey. Yes, honey is really basically bee barf. Otis and grandpa giggled as they tried several sweet samples. The frown that followed Otis to the farm that morning had been replaced, just like his fears. Smiling, he asked, Grandpa, can we come back? Grandpa and Farmer Jerry shared a smile. Anytime, Jerry offered. While Otis still didn't want to be stung, he now knew that bees didn't have any interest in stinging him. They had other, more important jobs to do. And so did he. Be love can be hard. Thank you, Cammie. And thank you, Justice Page, for such a wonderful reading and book. And Justice Page, did we see a cameo of your perpendicular pinky on a few of those pages? Ah, you caught that. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> the work you both do individually and with the Page Foundation and Page Scholars is so important. And knowing that book sales support the Page Foundation, I encourage everyone to go buy at least one copy. Advocacy and education to save the bees and all pollinators for that matter comes in many forms. Thanks to scientists at Rutgers University, we know today specialty crop yields are suffering due to insufficient numbers of insect pollinators. More and more acres of healthy habitat is exactly what's needed for all those native bees and honeybees to thrive. So backyard gardens, of course, yes, definitely. And scientists at the National Renewable Energy Lab and Argonne National Lab published research showing how solar sites can also help. Restaurateurs and electric cooperatives have also found a sweet reason to love solar more. I'd like to welcome Chef Matteo McBee of Crew Restaurant and Greg Ritterbush, CEO of Conexus Energy. Chef, your restaurant is a key example of an organization taking full advantage of the co-benefits of solar. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? And I understand there's a family connection as well. Yeah, so a pretty cool family connection. Uh, my father, Ursel McBee, um, actually played with Justice Page on the Minnesota Vikings, as well as my mother, Mary McBee, uh, former principal of St. Paul Central, has had many uh, Page scholars throughout her 28 years. Um, at St. Paul Central. We're always looking for really cool, sustainable products to use in our restaurant uh, and our bakery. And so we use bear honey right now in a variety of different ways, both in the restaurant and in flour and flour bakery. We also have a nonprofit called Model Citizen Inc. And our mission is to educate and connect communities through the power of farming, food, and sustainable practices and building strong future leaders. And so we're connecting with communities here in St. Joseph, as well as in St. Cloud as well as in the Twin Cities to engage youth um, and bring them out to our farm um, so they can see uh, where a lot of these practices are done. And we invite you all to come out to Flower and Flower and come out to Crew Restaurant and enjoy some really awesome Cajun Creole food and artisan pastries. Uh, and we do offer uh, to-go and curbside um, all through this time that we're in right now. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mateo. Your work is such an inspiration and I'm just so amazed that you opened the restaurant right at the beginning of the pandemic and you're doing well. So congrats to you and uh, wish you all the continued success in the world. And now Greg Ritterbush, CEO of Conexus Energy. This is such a good example of how one organization can find so many reasons to love solar. It's those co-benefits that we talk about. But how did we get to this point? Greg, can you shine a light for us on your experience as the CEO of a large rural electric cooperative? I sure will, Rob. And, you know, thanks very much for having Conexus at this event. And thank you to you and Janice and Justice Page and Cami Page for calling attention to how important pollinators and bees are to our daily life. And to Melanie at Boat Solar and Chef Mateo, who just made us all very hungry as he described his food, uh, you all contribute to sustainable solutions in your work. So Conexus Energy provides electricity to residences and businesses across a region north of the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area. Our mission in life is to assure electricity is affordable, reliable, available, and increasingly environmental sustainable. And as a co-op, our customers are actually called members. And the cool thing is that they collectively own Conexus. They have a say in what we're doing, how we're doing it. So I just want to make three quick points. First, 
the generation electricity and the way it's being used is going through a massive transition and solar generation is an important element. Connexus members have been clear to us. We would like greener electricity, but we don't want it to cost more. And that's something I think we can all get on port with. So with solar and wind and batteries and other innovations, we can do just that. Second, our approach to solar is to generate electricity closer to our members' homes and businesses instead of generating it far away and using transmission wires to ring it back. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but Connexus members get the benefit of directly using renewable energy that is generated right near them, right here. Because it takes a good amount of space, we are very careful to work with communities and make the best use of the land that we're allowed to develop. And we've had some advice from Rob and Fresh Energy along the way when we build solar. Pollinator friendly ground cover, which is a mix of seasonally blooming flowers and grasses are planted under and around our panels today. We won't develop solar without it. Why cover land with anything else like gravel or turf grass when pollinator plantings can help the bees? And then we've taken another step forward inviting beekeepers to put their apiaries on the very same land next to our array. Think of this, we get triple value from the land and create something special in our communities. Affordable, clean solar generation, prairie plantings friendly to pollinators, and the cherry on top is apiaries producing honey. I think the bees living in the midst of our solar arrays are some very, very happy bees indeed. And my third point is something I see happening all over and even in this time we're spending together. Greening electricity on the grid, helping pollinators, helping beekeepers and farmers and restaurants. We're all connected. We can find opportunities to help. And so I close by saying again how Connexus appreciated being here to share these solutions and Thanks to Fresh Energy and Boat Solar for your leadership on these and related issues in our communities. Thank you, Cami, for the wonderful work you're doing, for being a second grade teacher. That's awesome. And Justice Page, it's just been a true honor to be a part of this event with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, turn it back to you. And thanks for being here, Greg. Back in 2015, Fresh Energy noticed the pollinator-friendly solar projects being done in the UK by this incredibly forward-thinking team from Eden Renewables. And we imported that idea to the United States in partnership with agriculture and conservation leaders. Connexus Energy, Excel Energy, MCE Clean Energy, and a growing list of corporations, universities, and cities are showing their leadership and asking for solar sites with these co-benefits. Now, Minnesota was the first state in the country to establish this flexible, science-based, statewide standard for vegetation on solar sites. And since then, these practices have been built on and improved in several other states, including New York, South Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Michigan, Vermont, Indiana, Ohio, and Illinois. And because of this, this shared love of pairing clean energy with agriculture and conservation, diverse perennial vegetation is one of the fastest growing best practices for ground cover on solar sites. Speaking of love, on behalf of us all here at Fresh Energy, we'd like to extend our gratitude and warm thanks to the authors, Justice Page, Cami Page, as well as to Vote Solar and Connexus Energy, Eden Renewables, and Chef Matteo McBee. Be Love, can be hard, is available from the Page Foundation. Buy a copy for yourself and a friend today. That's it, folks. More and more each year, there's more and more to love about solar.